Hello again, Year 9. Now, I'm actually making this video before you've done uh, the video I set you for Tuesday, because I work a day in advance. So at the end of Tuesday's video, I asked you to give me feedback on the four sections that we worked through. I haven't seen that feedback yet, so I will plan next week's lessons based on that. But for today, I'm going to start with something I think is really important with fractions. Um, and um, I'm going to uh, talk today about ordering fractions. So that's my objective um, for today. It's the 13th of uh, January. Um, so let's start with some, well, I'm hoping some easy uh, um, um, examples. So if I asked you which was bigger, one quarter or three quarters, I'm, I'm hoping that you would say, well, it's, it's obvious. Um, when the denominators are the same, when we're dealing with the same fraction, it's easy, isn't it? And, and are you happy with me using that symbol in between the two? Um, I don't know if you're thinking crocodiles, are you? But, yeah, but the, this symbol, the uh, wide end, points to the larger of the two things. And, and so with this one, we're talking about sevenths. So five sevenths is going to be bigger than three sevenths, isn't it? So um, I would use the symbol that way around. I wonder if um, common sense can help us with uh, this as well, with some more complicated ones where we've got different denominators. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if I take a pizza, cut it up into five pieces. If I take a second identical pizza, pizza cut it into seven pieces, uh, which has got the bigger pieces? I I'm hoping you can see that um, the fifths are going to be bigger than the sevenths. So one fifth is bigger than one seventh. Now, maybe that's a little confusing because that's got a bigger denominator, hasn't it? But again, think about the pizza. Pizza cut into five, pizza cut into seven. I want one of these pieces. I know these pieces are going to be bigger. I wonder if you could come up with an argument to help uh, decide which of those two is bigger. Well, I know that uh, a half is going to be bigger because if I'm dealing with tenths, so if I cut my pizza up into ten pieces, five of them would be a half, wouldn't they? Five tenths is the same as a half. So um, three tenths is smaller. So again, the one on the left is the bigger fraction. I was a bit silly there. I, I did three where they were. It's not always going to be the one on the left is bigger. This one, the one on the right was bigger. Um, and we use whichever of the correct symbols uh, applies. So I'm hoping that that you can understand um, and do by common sense. Can I just give you four others to try? Try yourself using what I'm calling um, common sense. OK, so can you come up with a reason without having to do any sort of calculation, a reason which helps you decide which of these two fractions is bigger and put the correct sign in between them? So put that sign in if the one on the left is bigger and put that sign in if the one on the right is bigger. Pause and have a go. OK, I hope you're not hungry because uh, I'm going to keep talking about pizza. So if I, I can picture half a pizza and I can picture a pizza cut into three pieces, these are going to be bigger, aren't they? Similarly, I can picture a pizza cut into 10 and I can picture a pizza cut into 9. There's not much in it, but those are going to be bigger, aren't they? The ninths are going to be bigger. I don't know if you managed to get this one a bit more subtle. Uh, if I cut a pizza into five pieces and I eat two of them, I haven't yet eaten half the pizza, have I? I'd have to eat another half a piece. So this is bigger. And back to pizza again. Pizza cut into six. Pizza cut into seven, these pieces are going to be bigger. OK, but you might be saying, I don't understand that. Or you might be faced with a more complicated example, like one of these ones. And so we need a strategy. We need a strategy we can use when either common sense doesn't help us or when the numbers are such that actually it's too complicated to do by common sense anyway. And this is where a really key fraction technique comes in, and that is the idea of a common denominator. It is easy to compare fractions with the same denominator. We are dealing with the same fraction. 
these two fractions have a different denominator. So we cannot compare them easily, but we can change them so they have the same denominator. And I'm sure this is something you are uh, familiar with, although it might be a bit rusty. So we're asking, remembering that we can multiply fractions to get equivalent fractions, provided we multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. We're asking what's the first number in the 5 and the 6 times table. Answer's 30. And so to make 5 into 30, I have multiplied it by 6. So I need to multiply 4 by 6 as well. So I've multiplied the numerator by 6 and the denominator by 6. That's 24. So 4 fifths is the same as 24 thirtieths. What have I multiplied 6 by to make it into 30? Well, I've multiplied it by 5, and I need to do the same to the top. So I've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 5. So I can see there wasn't much in it, but this one is just bigger. 5 sixths is 25 thirtieths, so it's just bigger. So I'm going to put that symbol in between the two. Now, this next one, I don't know if you can see how this one's actually a little bit easier. Let me write the fractions again over here. What's the first number in the 10 and the 5 times table? Well, hopefully you can see it's 10. So I don't need to change that fraction at all. All I need to do is to double 5, so I need to double 2. So I've multiplied the top, the numerator, and the bottom, the denominator, by 2. OK, I can now see that this fraction, 4 tenths, is bigger than 3 tenths. So this is the bigger fraction again. So go on, press pause, see if you can tell me which is bigger out of those two fractions. Did you use 40 or did you use 80? I and mean, you could have used 80, but 40 is the first number in both times tables, so it just means you get slightly easier numbers to deal with. Uh, to turn 10 into 40, we multiply it by 4, so I multiply the numerator by 4 as well, 16. To turn 8 into 40, I multiply it by 5, so same to the numerator. Easy to see which is bigger then. Uh, one on the left again. Sorry, I've, again, this time I've chosen examples where they're all bigger on the left. That's not always going to be the case. But well done. So I, I guess we've sort of talked about two techniques already, haven't we? We've talked about common sense. That was the first sort of ones where we just know. We know that one third is smaller than one half. And that's my sort of pizza approach, if you like. I you know, visualise the problem. But for the rest of this lesson, we're going to say, OK, what do we do when this fails us? And that's where the common denominator comes in. And common denominator is a really useful technique uh, elsewhere. You will remember, some of you, that we use it when we add and subtract fractions as well. So it's a really good place to start this uh, section of work on fractions. So we've looked at comparing two fractions. Let's ramp up the difficulty a little bit. OK, so uh, I'm using a, a resource from, a, uh, from another website here. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do these ones because these are easy. But what we're doing here are we are taking not a pair of fact fractions, but a list of fractions and putting them in order um, from smallest to largest, actually. So, you know, I'm not going to ask you to do this because it's easy, isn't it? One seventh is the smallest, then two sevenths, then five sevenths, and then six sevenths. I mean, that's, that's nice and easy because the denominators are the same. So let's try a few um, of the harder examples on this sheet. So we're going to do one from question two and a couple from question three. And then there's a question four underneath, which um, is a little bit fiddlier. So question two, I'm sure you're going to breeze through as well. So I'm going to write question two, part A out here. So these are the fractions that we are being asked to order. And I don't doubt that some of you will have engaged common sense already and you will be able to put those in order without using a common denominator. Brilliant. OK, forgive me, though, because I'm going to go for the common denominator approach just in case you're not so fortunate. So. 
hopefully you, you can spot the common denominator in this question. Um, it's going to be 10, isn't it? Because 5 is in, uh, sorry, 10 is in the 5 times table and it's also in the 10 times table. So these two fractions don't need to change. Um, and to turn 5 into 10, you double it. So I'm going to double 1 and I'm going to double. So there we go. Now it's really easy to put them in order. Um, and when I put them in order, I'm going to write the original fraction, not the common denominator version. So smallest will obviously be 1 tenth. So 1 tenth comes first. I'll cross it out. So I know I've done it. And then 2 tenths. But we were originally given that fraction as 1 fifth. So I'm going to write down 1 fifth. And then 3 tenths. And then 4 tenths, which we were given as 2 fifths. OK. So just actually, I, I, I said we just do one from question uh, two. Just have a go at D for me before we move on. So I'll pause the video at this point. Have a go at question two D, just the same as we did here with two A. See if you can put those in order, smallest to biggest. OK, so hopefully you picked 20 as your denominator. So these two didn't need to be changed. To turn 5 into 20, I multiply it by 4, so I need to multiply numerator and denominator by 4. 3 4s are 12. And again here, to turn 5 into 20, I need to multiply it by 4, so I do the same to the top. I multiply 2 by 4. Right, now I can put them in order. 8 twentieths is the smallest. That was given to us as 2 fifths. Uh, 9 twentieths next. That was actually written as 9 twentieths. 12 twentieths, that was 3 fifths, and that means 13 twentieths was the biggest from that list. Well done if you got that correct. Okay, so question 3a now. A um, little bit trickier, but I'm sure most of you will have no problems recognising that the common denominator is 15 because 15 is in the 3 times table, the 5 times table, and it's 1 times 15, so it's also in the 15 times table. So those two don't need to change. Right, finish that one off for me then. So change those two fractions, different denominators, so you're multiplying by a different thing each time, and then put it in order for me. Pause and have a go. So 2 thirds, top and bottom, multiplied by 5, so it became 10 over 15. Uh, 3 fifths, top and bottom multiplied by 3, 5 times 3 is 15, so I did 3 times 3, which is 9. I was then able to compare them and put them in order. And remember, when you write them in order, I didn't write 10 fifteenths, because in the question it was 2 thirds, so I wrote 2 thirds. And the same is true with 3 fifths. OK, uh, so let's have a go at 3D. You're on your own for this one, so... Write them out, pick a common denominator, change them all, put them in order. 3D, pause the video and have a go. OK, so 16 was my denominator. Um, these two didn't need to change. 4 times 4 is 16, so I did 3 times 4 to make 12. Um, 8 times 2 is 16, so uh, 5 times 2 gave me 10. I could then put them in order. OK, so let's ramp it up one more. OK, then. so we're going to have a go at 4a on the sheet. Um, I've listed out my fraction, so my next step is common denominator. So what do you do if you're stuck and you can't work out what the common denominator is? Some of you will see this straight away, but you, know, you might be finding it tricky. I need the first number in the 4, the 3, there's two 3s, and the 6 times table. So let's list out those times tables. So 3... 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, that's the 3 times table, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, that's the 4 times table, 6, 12, 18, 24, that's the uh, 6 times table. I'm looking for the first number that's in all three lists, there it is. Now, it's not always in a nice diagonal line like that, but uh, 
12 is certainly the first number that features in every list. And remember, I need to multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing. So I ask, what do I multiply 4 by to make 12? Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So I do the same to the top. So I've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 3, giving me 9. What do I multiply 3 by to make 12? Well, that's multiplied by 4. So I do the same to the top, same to the numerator. I multiply that by 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And I've got another 3 here, so I need to multiply that by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. And then 6. What do I multiply 6 by to make 12? Well, 12 is 6 times 2. So I need to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. OK, now I've got a common denominator. It's easy to put them in order. So this is the smallest, 4 twelfths. So 1 third, I write, because that was the fraction it was originally. Um, I've got uh, 8 twelfths is next, so that's 2 thirds. Then 9 twelfths, which was 3 quarters. And then lastly, 10 twelfths, which is 5 sixths, smallest to largest. OK, OK, have a go at 4B for me. Uh, pause the video and uh, we'll go through it in just a minute. OK, I got 24 as my common denominator. How did I know it was 24? Well, I listed out the numbers in the 4 times table. Here they were, the 8 times table, 6 times table, 12 times table. I spotted that 24 was in all of those lists. So I chose that 24 as my denominator. 24 is 4 times 6, so I do 1 times 6. 24 is 8 times 3, so I do 3 times 3. 24 is 6 times 4, so I do 1 times 4. 24 is 12 times 2, so I do 5 times 2. And then this is the easy bit, isn't it? We've got the same denominator now, so I know that 4 24 is the smallest, that was 1 6. Then 6 24, that's 1 quarter. Then 9 24, that's 3 8. And last but not least, because it's the biggest, 5 12. So I've put those fractions in order, smallest to largest. And just be careful, I mean, it just happens today, we've, we've done only down smallest to largest. I suppose you could be asked the other way around. Right, so two for you to try. And, and listen, I don't want you to do the whole of question four. I want you to have a go at ordering C. And I want you to have a go at ordering D. Now C, I'm going to leave you to work out the common denominator. But I am going to help you with D, because I think D is a nasty one. The denominator you need to go for with D is 200. OK, so you're going to have a go at C and D. And I'd be grateful if you could submit those on class charts. Um, and uh, so um, I can then mark those and uh, we can continue with our journey through fractions next Monday. So you're going to do C to work out the denominator for me. You're going to do D. I've told you the denominator is going to be 200. And you're going to take a photo of your work and submit it to me on class charts. And right, good stuff. Take care. See you next month.